Hey guys, Dan here from Your Guitar Academy and welcome to the last lesson in this blues course. And I'm so proud of you for getting all the way through it. If you're watching this lesson, massive congratulations, big pat on the back. Irrespective as to whether you've nailed every element of it, you will have improved your playing. So this is just really great news. As with any of our courses, you know, they're designed, you know, you get through to the end and then you work through them. You just keep working through the pieces. They're your kind of guide as to how you're getting on with this. So in this last lesson, we're gonna be doing the last couple of licks in this piece. And then we're gonna be firstly doing it with the drums. So we play the whole thing through with the drums and then taking the drums away. And this is where your progression will start into the next phase, which is doing this a cappella, making this sound sweet, beautiful, taking your time with it, but at the same time, having that inner metronome, that inner drum beat, that allows it to have the feet tapping and everyone around you understanding what you're doing. So it can be challenging that part. So let's first of all go through these licks, pick up the guitar and let's get started. guys if you just joined us then don't forget you can get all of the write-up you can get the tab you can get the fretboard diagrams and everything else over on the website absolutely free don't forget to leave us a comment on any of the videos let us know how you're getting on give us any questions you've got about the content please also like and subscribe as it massively helps us spread the word about these videos okay then guys so the last bit if you remember we kind of finished up on the D and now we're moving into the C, and the last couple of licks sound like this. All right, so we've got that kind of C section and the turnaround section. Now, the, the key thing here is that when we're moving to the C, we're once again transporting everything with us. So we're using the C dominant seventh arpeggio. We're using the C major pentatonic. And if we want to, we could even use the C minor pentatonic. And even if we wanted to, we could do the G minor, you know, pentatonic as well over that. All of these options are there. The way we've done it here is we've gone from the root of C, then we've done the semitone from the minor third to the major third, then the fifth, and then I'm gonna do this almost like Hendrix-esque, really highlighting this C, the C major kind of sound within that dominant, sweet sound, okay? So I'm gonna simply double the eight on the, on the B and the E string and hammer onto the 10. Okay. Notice that you really got to let that high E string ring out. Okay. So I'm just going to hit that. One, two. And then I'm going to come here. So think of that pentatonic shape. And I'm going to grab the seventh fret and the eighth fret. Okay. On the G and the B string. And I'm going to hammer on what is really the major third of C. And then I'm going to come back to the root of C. So I get this kind of like that. Okay. And that brings me back down to the G. So all together from the C. And then back to the G. And then when I get back down to the G, I'm doing a turnaround. So a nice, simple one, two, three, four, five, C sharp to C9, two, three, four, five. Then we've got the G sharp 13. So again, that's just really creating tension. Back to the G. One, two, three, four, five, six, one. And this will be the first time we've used a concept of the chromatics, but this time coming from low to high. So low, doing a D flat up to the D9. Okay. 
And the reason, you can do either, we could have gone or the reason we have gone from low to high here is because I've just done two instances of going from high to low, from high to low. So I didn't want to go another, I want to kind of mix it up a little bit, okay? So you get, and then we finish the whole thing with a kind of G9 right up here, except I'm going to go to G sharp, slide it down to G9, okay? So that turnaround section is this, one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 and we finish. Okay, so let's get the drum beat up and let's do those two licks. So the C, from the C, and then to the turnaround section. Okay, so three. Four, five, six. Final thing before we get to removing the drums, let's do the whole thing with the drums. Okay, so I'm gonna count myself through it. Um, I'm gonna get myself, I'm gonna let this kind of loop get towards the end. Here we go. So, one, two. So there is so much going on in that track and part of the beauty of this style of the blues is, is well honestly it's really getting confident with that because you want to have the time, you want to know the track well enough so that you've got the time to put those little extra bits of class into each lick you know. So rather than going, going more like this. You know, everything is about the dynamic, about the control of what you're doing. So, as I said at the start of this unit, with this particular thing, we're bringing together lead and rhythm, okay? So it's a very tricky concept straight away. We're dealing with a 12-8 time signature, and we're, I'm expecting you to then do know that how, where every chord is, how the rhythm should be, and throw in all of these quite hard licks at the same time. So it's, it really is a project piece for months to come that I want you guys to try and get together. If you can get this together, that 12-8 is going to be so ingrained in your soul that you're going to be able to just tackle any slow blues, okay? All of this stuff is usable. Even if you didn't do a kind of chord and lead thing, you just took out the lead parts of this, there's so much you can use here when you're just improvising. And I'd highly recommend, you know, chucking on your favorite 12-bar blues tracks, the 12-8, and trying to do exactly this. You know, trying to play over it, maybe do the chords first, bit of lead, then try and do them together, 
Um, you know, you've got a little bit of like a call and response thing going on here as well, whereby you might have a, a, a singer. So if I maybe moved up to B flat. Have you ever loved a woman so much? It's a shame and a sin. So much it's a shame and a sin When all the time you know He belongs to your very best friend <laughs> I just couldn't help myself there, honestly. Uh, one of my favorite all-time tracks. Um, I think my favorite version of that, I mean, I have to admit, Freddie King's version just blows my mind most of the time, probably because he's also some badass gospel singer as well as an incredible player. But obviously the Clapton version, Derek and the Dominoes, uh, Buddy Guy's version, I love that as well. I can't remember what the album's called now, but anyway. There's so much, you can see how I, I actually threw in loads of the licks that we were working on, loads of the chord ideas that we were working on, but it only all works if I've got that inner rhythm. So I want you to do this over and over again until that inner rhythm develops. So what I'm gonna leave you with now at the end of this course, a kind of goal to set yourself to try and do, is I'm gonna now play without the drum beat the whole thing. It's gonna be a little bit slow, it's gonna be a little bit more casual, I'm not gonna say it's, it's gonna bang on as it is with the drum beat, but it's deliberately gonna be like that. It's gonna have that free time kind of style to it. And listen out for those dynamics, listen out for when I'm hitting the plectrum, when I'm hitting the fingers, um, and just really just kind of the confidence. I, I have to admit, I, I know the track 90%, uh, so there might be little times where I, I, I mess up, but I'm gonna try and show you guys how it might kind of end up sounding. So, here we go. Ready? Spotlight on me. This is kind of like my, my Jack Black moment. The spotlight comes down. Here we go. So. And the vent, the crazy chaotic vent. There we go guys, I enjoyed that. I really hope you enjoyed that too. Hopefully you now feel like you've got a really good understanding of what the slow blues is, the theory behind it, the time signatures, and you're ready to kind of take this on and make it all your own. I'll see you next time for another course. Have fun.